What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So in this video today, we're going to go through the brand new Kizuna Clash. Now, I've said this on my stream and on the video that I made a couple of days ago preparing you guys for this event. I do think this is going to be very challenging. I do think it is probably the most difficult Kizuna Clash that we've had thus far. So let's go ahead and talk about it before we get into the actual dungeon itself. We need to talk about a couple of things. First thing is first, if you actually go ahead over to the exchange, you can actually see that there are certain characters that you can pick up here. So if we go to the treasure list and we go to box five, only in box five, you'll be able to pick up three copies of Podcast D Ace, which is from the World Clash, which happened in 2018, I believe. So if you do not own this Ace, make sure, do not leave this box without picking up one copy of this character. Additionally, on box six, you'll be able to pick up a brand new Sabo. This Sabo was also available through the World Clash event, and he works very well with that Ace as well. Um, this Sabo and Ace are actually boosted for this Kizuna event. I wouldn't suggest running them because they don't get type advantage against any of the bosses, but look, the options there if you do want to go ahead and do it so make sure do not leave these boxes without picking up at least one copy of these units because you never know when you're going to need them additionally with these uh with these boxes this is the first time on one piece treasure cruise global that players will get access to max limit breaking zoro and sanji now i personally haven't reached box seven yet so i haven't maxed his limit break i am very very close though if we go ahead and have a look here, you can see that I have got three of the materials. I need to clear two more boxes to get two of the materials, and I am complete with Zora and Sanji. Now, do not fret. If you do not have your Zora and Sanji completed, there will be future Kizunas where their materials will still be available. So do not fret. You'll be able to get them in the future on other Kizunas. You will still be able to max them out. Do not worry. That is still all good. But this is the first time on Global where people will be able to actually go ahead and max them out. I do have now their cooldown fully maxed down at a 14 turn cooldown which is very very good actually usable now in content which is awesome to see uh but that that's really really cool but um you know of course that's basically what i wanted to talk about here i wanted to talk about the fact that yes now we have access to a maxed Zoro and Sanji, and you'll be able to get them in the future. Of course, this is the Akanu boss fight. There's no new units that arrive in this Kizuna mode. Um, obviously, if you don't have the World Clash Ace or Sabo, you can pick them up and they can be classified as new for you. But then there's no like debuting character in this Kizuna Clash, unfortunately. So we'll have to wait for a future Kizuna for something new to arrive. But anyways, now that we've done that, got all the stuff out the way, let's go ahead and start talking about each of the variations against Kizuna Clash versus Sakazuki. Okay, so getting into this Kizuna Clash, the first variation that we're going to go through in this video here is going to be against the Quick Variation. So you want to be building a team predominantly of Strength decks and Quick Characters. Honestly, I would suggest building all of your teams for this Kizuna built around Strength decks and Quick Characters. It is the most optimal way around it. So the most important thing about my particular team, that's if you're using my team, is the support character on the Raid Judge. Very, very important to use that Strength Fortnite uh, Raid Juve on that Judge because it means that it will enable us to actually go ahead and use the Luffy Law Special on Stage 3 because he does interrupt Beneficial Orb enabling, which Luffy and Law does provide. So by having a support ability that can provide an effect where basically we can use Luffy Law at that point, that's the most important part. If you do not have that Raid Juve uh, attached to that Judge, I would suggest bringing someone like Coliseum Rayleigh, use his special on Stage 2 for a multi-turn um, you know, Beneficial Orb enabling effect and then attach the raid Zoro support to him so at least you get some color affinity to your slasher characters on the final boss fight but on stage two you encounter this Sabo right here with 700,000 HP his preemptive attack will give your whole crew four turns of chain lock and he buffs his own attack for one turn make sure to kill him after turn three or before turn three happens because he will give you some special rewind and then we have the final boss against a Kainu who will go ahead and have a delay immunity and regular poison immunity you can apply toxic here so you could bring legend magellan with the support of hannibal rare recruit that is something you could do here in my eyes i think using someone like coliseum morley is very good because his effect will go ahead and remove the threshold of the enemy which he does apply by five turns as well as giving you a conditional attack boost he also applies normal attacks only he has one turn of a barrier as well it's a 30 hit combo barrier so someone to remove that is going to be great you could use the world clash blackbeard or you could use this treasure map shanks here he does change 
kill your orbs into block, and this is why uh, Shanks is also very, very good here. And then, as I said, he does have an interrupt when you use any special that is a beneficial orb enable. He will remove it. I think he does remove it and maybe does something else. I'm not 100% sure what he does, but he does state don't use a beneficial orb enable. So I want to make that clear. Make sure to not use a beneficial orb enable or use a beneficial orb enable and carry it into this stage so that Luffy and Law can be activated if you do choose to use him on this fight. So now we move on to the second variation of this video, which will be the Strength Boss. Uh, this is the team that I am using, which is, a, again, another double Luffy lore team. And with this team, we do have the World Clash Akainu. Now, in my preparation video, I said I didn't have him. I recently pulled him in the Sugo Fest that dropped today. I will be uploading a video separately if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. Make sure you go ahead and check it out once it does go live on the channel. But let's go ahead and get into it. So with stage one, there'll be special cooldown given to fighters, driven, and shooter characters. So you want to predominantly build your team around those classes specifically. And because it is the strength variation, you want to be bringing quick characters of those units. Um, so the stage two is the mini boss fight against Jinbei. He is pretty annoying, actually. He does have a defense up for three turns and again, also has a barrier. And again, if you don't kill him after turn three, he does special rewind your characters. Uh, in my situation here, I'm using the 20th anniversary Frankie attached to my captain and when I use his special ability it does reduce the enemy's defense significantly for that one turn and because when we use the switch ability of Luffy and Law we do get barrier penetration and we'll just we go through defensive effects also Magellan and Hannibal when you rainbow them out they also have barrier penetration so you have two characters on your team that can deal damage to Jinbei through his barrier if you have this team composition it does work out very very well if you don't have anything like that you can stall one turn wait for the barrier to expire and then try and take him down that is also an option you could try but following the Jinbei fight on stage 2, we move on to stage 3, which of course is going to be Akainu once again, the strength variation. His preemptive attack has a full immunity buff, so you cannot go ahead and, uh, you know, get a conditional boost. Uh, he also applies 5 turns of increased damage taken and 5 turns of attack down to your team. Your left column will be binded for 7 turns and he randomly changes your orbs around. The strength rare recruit marker on this team is very, very good because he can remove the uh, attack down, the bind, and also reduce damage taken because when you kill a Kainu, he does a death damage hit to your team. So you need a damage reducer and you need a way to remove the attack down and the bind. Also, do not go ahead and use any special ability that will lock your chain multiplier or will boost your chain multiplier. In this situation, you can see I do use Tezoro, but the thing is, is he will remove your positive buffs if you apply one of those buffs that I mentioned. And because when we use Tezoro first on the stage, it will not activate his special interrupt. So if you do choose to bring a chain locker, make sure it is not an ability that grants multiple different buffs on top of a chain lock. Otherwise, he's going to remove it, which is very important to not do, of course. Uh, and of course, with this team, we do have Magellan and Hannibal for color affinity. We've got the Akainu for the attack boost. If you don't have Akainu, you can still use someone such as the dual Kizuna unit, the, the Zoro and Sanji unit. He's going to be a really good option. If I didn't pull Akainu, I would have been using them in this case here. But because I did pull Akainu, of course I'm going to go ahead and use him. He's going to help out a lot in this Kizuna Clash. And now let's go ahead and move on to the final variation, which is going to be the Dex variation. So with this particular variation, in my personal opinion, I do think it is the easiest of the three different variations this time around. Um, I am using a friend captain of Luffy and Ace, and the main reason for that is, is because I want an orb booster on my team. And with the team that I currently own, uh, there is no orb booster there. So by utilizing a Luffy and Ace friend captain with Sabo Koala main captain, you're able to do that, right? Because I want to be using the World Clash Luffy because he is boosted for this event. He's going to be dealing absurd amounts of damage. Uh, I don't actually use the World Clash Luffy special at all during this entire run so he is completely replaceable not a required unit here now with this team you want to be trying to build free spirit a powerhouse or a cerebral based team because those are obviously the characters that get their special cooldown now on stage two against aokiji he has 700,000 hp he does have a resilience buff and a perfect barrier what i would suggest here make sure you have colosseum mole colosseum mole is one of the most important units for this fight as you can use his special ability on stage two to not only remove the resilience and give you a condition boost but if you hit two perfects during that turn you use his special when you move on to the next stage he actually reduces the enemy's defense which means you're able to get multiple different turns 
of a 1.75 conditional attack boost. So Colosseum Morley is so good for this fight. So we use the Colosseum Morley here, and then we can go ahead and kill Aokiji and get the conditional boost on the following stage as well. So moving on to stage three against Dex Akainu, he does have a delay immunity and normal attacks only as well. So, you know, don't bring any special damage. That's not going to help you here. And because he is delay immune, you can reduce his defense. He does go ahead and reduce your chain multiplier for three turns, and he will bind and despair your captains for seven turns. So we can go ahead and use Marco to unbind our captains and then use their switch abilities to go ahead and remove the despair make sure if you are using this team to use boa hancock special before you switch with sabu and koala otherwise you'll get uh, the wrong uh, multiplier for your color affinity of course and then the badly matching slots that are given to your team either the luffy and a special or the sabu and koala special both of those will give you a full board of matching orbs which does help out a lot and you're able to take down a kinder relatively simply with that team so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video of breaking down this kizuna clash hopefully you guys understand what the hell's going on and uh if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post on my channel including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i will see you guys within the next video